Hey, what's up everybody? So coming to you this morning, we're gonna do the boxing recap from over this past weekend, uh, August 22nd. Um, if it's a big enough, uh, you know, week of cards, of, of boxing cards, I'm gonna do a recap of them. Uh, I might not do that on every one, but if it's uh, big time stuff happens and everything, um, over the course of that week of boxing, I'll probably do a recap or big enough fighters. Um, you know, if not, then the guys that actually won, I'll be doing those on uh, like their what's next and shit like that if they're in the top 10. But anyways, man, what a what a Saturday of boxing. I mean, just all around good boxing took place. Um, I'm going to go from uh, from bottom to top in terms of the biggest cards and, and what they were and everything. And, um, you know, I'll try to remember all the cards. Let's start with the Fox PBC card that happened on Saturday evening, though. Um, the co-feature saw Sebastian Fundora, um, undefeated guy on the rise at, uh, at super welterweight. This dude is 6'6". Six, six. I was tripping off of that. 6'6", um, six, six guy fighting at 154. You know, I mean, um, I liken that to uh, Paul Williams, but I, think, I don't even think Paul Williams was that big. Um, but this dude was real big. He fought Nathaniel Gallimore, a tough guy who, uh, you know, kind of a journeyman, been in there. He's lost to um, Julian J. Rock Williams. Um, I believe uh, Gallimore just lost to Erickson Lubin last year, but he also had a win over Jason Rosario in his career. He stopped Jason Rosario, the guy who just beat J. Rock, um, you know, a few years ago. So Gallimore established. He's not the best guy, but he's like that stepping stone fighter. And man, Fundora just whipped his ass. I mean, he fucking whipped his ass. Um, I, I think it was the sixth, seventh round in that area, possibly the eighth round that he finally stopped him. Um, but man, just a strong performance out of an undefeated guy on the rise. Really good win right there. Possibly could get him in the top 10. We'll see. I got to reevaluate my top 10, but impressive performance on the Fox undercard. Now, the main event, we're going to look at that one. You saw Sean Porter and Sebastian Formella, um, undefeated guy from Germany. And Porter looked fucking great. Porter just looked like he, you know, it was one of those fights where you could, an upset could happen because you're overlooking a guy. Because pretty much Porter, a win, he's guaranteed uh, the winner of Errol Spence, Danny Garcia. Um, you know, and, and unless those guys decide to give up that belt, which, why would they? You know, a rematch with the both close fights. But anyway, Porter went in there, just a guy on a mission, and just broke down. Uh, for Mella. For Mella showed a lot of heart. The guy kept punching, landed some shots, but man, he just got overwhelmed by by the pressure of Porter. Porter is still very, very good, and um, I can't wait to see him again. He got a one-sided 12-round decision, pretty much damn near a shutout unanimous decision, and I can't wait to see what Porter uh, does. He, he's in line now to face the winner of Errol Spence and Danny Garcia um, as the WBC interim or mandatory challenger, so um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Um, we won't know until after November, but man, a good, strong performance to stay busy and stay active. And hopefully that's what happens next, but I'll, I'll get more into detail when I do my what's next on Sean Porter, but just a very good uh, performance out of him. Now I want to jump to the last card of the, of the day. You know, I'm going, like I said, I'm going in terms of the lowest to the biggest cards of the day. And we had on ESPN plus, um, which again, 499 guys, a lot more contact, uh, con a lot more content than just boxing on there. There's a lot of different things you can watch. Um, they have a lot of their 30 for 30 documentaries. All the old ones are stored there. A lot of good things on there. Check it out if you get a chance. You would definitely be worth the five bucks a month. But um, you had uh, the undercard saw Rob Brandt, um, former middleweight champ taking on uh, undefeated but little known Vitaly Kopalenko. Um, I don't know if Kopalenko was undefeated. He might not have been. He might have lost one fight um, to the guy from Canada, Stephen Butler. I think he did. But anyway, it was a close fight. Um, Rob Brad just broke him down, beat him up. He looked good, stopped him. They fought just over 160, um, but he's still focused on middleweight. He wants to prove that the loss to Ryota Murata in a rematch last July was, uh, wasn't really him. And um, I guess the reason why their mandatory third fight hasn't happened because I was wondering is Murata from Japan, they, they don't have international travel going on because of COVID-19. Uh, so, um, you know, that's why he said he really is focused on that. He wakes up. I love what he said after. He said he wakes up. Um, he dreams about 
fighting Murata again. He wakes up thinking about Murata. He goes to bed thinking about Murata. I love what he said, a lot of emotion there. He wants to get back in the ring with Murata, have that third fight. You know, he whipped Murata's ass by a one-sided decision the first time they fought in October of 2018 to take the title. And that was right before Murata was, was supposed to be fighting Triple G next. Um, then he went in against, uh, against uh, what's his name? Um, he fought Murata again in July of last year and he tried to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and Murata stopped him in two rounds. So, you know, uh, tough loss, but he's trying to bounce back. He's still a top 10 guy. He's my number nine middleweight right now. And uh, hopefully him and Murata, if international uh, travel gets approved, hopefully him and Murata are going at it again within the next six months or so uh, for that for that WBA regular belt at middleweight. Um, now we go to the main event on ESPN Plus was a great light heavyweight matchup between Elita Alvarez, former WBO champion, and Joe Smith Jr., former world title challenger. You know, these two guys established veterans um, at light heavyweight. They were fighting in a WBO final eliminator. Next fight, they're fighting for the vacant title, so a lot on the line. You had Alvarez came in the favorite. I picked him to win this fight. I picked him to knock Smith out or win a decision because I felt like he was just so much more complete, but he's also older, and Joe Smith, um, you know, uh, Alvarez knocked out Kovalev a couple years ago. Kovalev got him by a decision in a rematch, but his knockout was brutal. He's also knocked out, and he's beaten solid-ass fighters other than that. I also think he has a knockout win over Lucien Butte. So, you know, this guy, very established, very strong fighter, and he went in um, as the favorite. Then he had Joe Smith Jr. You know, he had beaten Bernard Hopkins, uh, ended Bernard Hopkins' career when he was 51. He, uh, you know... He came in, um, he lost to Sullivan Barrera, but he went 10 rounds with a broken jaw a couple years ago. Last year, he got his ass whipped by a one-sided decision against Dimitri Bival for the title. Came back this year, though, in January and upset Jesse Hart by just bullying Jesse Hart around the ring. Jesse Hart was the favorite. And you know what? He fucking did it again. He bullied Elita Alvarez around that ring. Alvarez landed some good shots, backed Joe Smith up a couple times. But Joe Smith, the brawler from New York, just kept coming forward, kept grinding, kept putting his pressure on and landing those big hard shots. And finally, a, a one-two combination in the ninth round finished off Alvarez, who was tired. Joe Smith at that point had pretty much won almost every round. Two of the cards had it, um, I believe it was seven rounds to one, and one card had it eight rounds to nothing. So he was pitching a shutout, damn near shutout, and he was he was he just looked good. Big time win for Joe Smith. He's in line for a world title now. Another world title shot is coming next for the vacant WBO belt. Congratulations to him. That was a huge win for Joe Smith Jr. Alvarez, tough loss, 36 years old. Not sure what's going to happen next for him, but tough loss, but big time win for Joe Smith and the way to turn his career around. And to tell you the truth, this just shows you how good Demetri Bavall is, the WBA champion, because last year he fought Joe Smith and he whipped Joe Smith's ass. He whipped his ass by one-sided decision. Joe Smith hurt Bival momentarily in the 10th, but not bad. And Bival came back and almost knocked Joe Smith out in the 12th. So this shows you how good Dimitri Bival, the WBA champion, is. He beat the shit out of John Pascal by one-sided decision. He beat the shit out of Sullivan Barrera, stopped him in the 12th round after Barrera had beaten Joe Smith. And then he whipped Joe Smith's ass too. Bival is going to skyrocket in the rankings, as is Smith. But it just shows you how good the light heavyweights are right now at 175. All right, now the last card of the day. We're only going to talk about the main event on the zone. It was earlier in the day on, from the United Kingdom. It was Dillian White against Alexander Povetkin for the WBC Interim Heavyweight Championship. Fucking great action fight right here. Two top 10 heavyweights. You have Dillian White, who's been maybe the hottest heavyweight the last two years overall in terms of the level of competition he's faced. He's been in line to fight for a world title, but he still hasn't received his first world title shot. Only loss coming in was to Anthony Joshua by a knockout in 2016 after he had hurt Joshua earlier that fight. You know, he'd beaten some good fighters coming in. Lucas Brown was an undefeated, big, hard-hitting guy. Knocked him out in six rounds in 2018. Came back and beat former WBO champion Joseph Parker by a tight, tight decision. Almost got knocked out in that fight, but he held on got a strong win. Rematch Derek Chisora, very solid established heavyweight in a rematch. They fought to a split decision a few years before and he was behind on the cards and he brutally knocked out 
um, Chisora with the knockout of the year in 2018. To cap off that year, he was tied for a heavyweight of the year in 2018. And came into 2019, won the interim belt, beat Oscar Rivas. Got knocked down late in that fight, though. So, but he um, he won a solid one-sided, you know, solid unanimous decision. And then beat uh, Marius Wack when he was very overweight last year um, by a decision. But he came in overweight, took the fight on short notice, fought on the Joshua Ruiz undercard. But top 10 guy, had him at number 7 at, at heavyweight. Some guys had him in the top 5, you know. A win would have got him in to a, a mandatory title shot against the winner of Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, um, you know, for the WBC belt because he was the interim champ. So big things were coming up for Dillian White. And if one of those guys vacated the belt, then he would become the full champion. He would just be upgraded. This guy had a lot of things going for him. Alexander Povetkin, the former world champion, came in, only losses to uh, Vladimir Klitschko and Anthony Joshua in his career, beat some very good, solid heavyweights. Never had that signature win against a top guy on American television, and he got it in this one. It was a good fight coming in. He's 41 years old. It was a good fight. Started off good, but Dillian White, after the first round, started controlling the action with his jab. He was landing good shots. He was outlanding. So I almost, I think he was landing at 37, 38%, pretty solid. And then um, in the fourth round, put Pavekin down twice. Had him hurt. Looked like he was just going to grind him, wear him down, and stop the 41-year-old former champ and get a nice, solid win. Fifth round, though, Alexander Pavekin showing his grit and his determination and his ring generalship and skill and experience. He landed a fucking wicked, wicked, left uppercut that knocked Dillian White out cold on the mat. He did not get up. Beautiful knockout for Alexander Povetkin. Probably the biggest win of his career right here. And he's now the WBC interim champion. Now it's interesting because he's not guaranteed a title shot because it, the title shot was only guaranteed to Dillian White. So, but Dillian White has a rematch clause in the contract. So, and Dillian White told Eddie Hearn right off the bat, give me that rematch. They're already talking about December for a rematch, but what a win. What a knockout by Alexander Povetkin. Huge win at 41. He proves he can still bang. And, you know, I'm going to do a video talking about the heavyweight division in general right now, but just a great win right here. And I really enjoyed uh, the weekend of boxing this past weekend. Go back and check out some of the highlights if you can on YouTube. Maybe you can pull up the whole fights, but a great weekend of boxing. If you missed it, you missed out big time. Boxing is back with in a serious way. This weekend is the weekend that brought it back, in my opinion. So big ups to Alexander Povetkin. Big ups to Joe Smith Jr. Big ups to Sean Porter, Sebastian Fundora, Rob Brandt, the guys that got the big wins this past weekend. Also, um, Julian Rodriguez. First round knockout of Anthony Loriano on the ESPN Plus undercard. Both were undefeated junior welterweights at 140, and he went and blasted the other guy, Anthony Loriano, in one round. Big time win. So, that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed it. That was the weekend recap for August 22nd. True Boxing, you've been hit with the truth.